what I've done with this script is subdivide a curve that has an overall length and I subdivided it using four different subdivisions which, te which technically are only three because we use an overall surface and subdivide it in three different places and so we have 36, 24, 24 and I left a gap here because I want to show how to add a dimension line here so you can see what the last segment is um, and so I'll be just doing an overview of how this script uh, comes together and I do want to plan to do a full tutorial on how this was created uh, so let me know what you guys think what I am going to do here is let's uh, take a look at what's going on here so we have the overall length if I decrease it we see that the end segment it decreases so we're adding from left here to right and as I move along I have division 1 which would be 36 and as you can see the dimensions obviously update as we move this around so I'll go here to 30 and then we can change to have different sizes and then at the end we have kind of what's left over and that's kind of the approach that I took for this script of course um, if we have a different approach then we would take that approach uh, whether it's uh, would be creating a subdivision in the middle and then making it symmetrical uh, this could also be symmetrical as long as we create that center line and then this division and this division uh, if they're both the same then we can say let's say here then we would say it's pretty symmetrical the only thing we need to make sure is that at the ends we have the same size so as you can see 36 36 and 30 doesn't really fit it ends up being that 24 is the one that makes it symmetrical so with that being said let's move on and let me show you the depth of course how deep that's um, going to be extruded then we move on to creating the counter height which then is subtracted from the countertop so from the bottom to the top we have 36 inches and then down from the top two inches down is what the countertop is at and I also created a scale factor So we can uh, use a scale factor for the overhang. So I do 1.5. We can do, let's say, 1.2. If we want this to be, let's say, like a countertop where you can sit in front of. So you can adjust that like this using a scale. We could also program it so we can pick a specific dimension. But I just use the scale um, to show on this example. Then we move on to the material depth which is going to be the thickness of the cabinet here. And I did make it hollow. Um, this way you, we can at least see what the inside is going to look like, whether it's we're going to have divisions for um, different shelves. We can adjust for that. But I do 0.75, which is kind of the three quarter inch um, typical material for a cabinet. Then moving on to the door depth, which I actually am not previewing. So I'll go here to preview. And what we have here is how deep the door is. If we have an offset. And that's necessary so the doors don't overlap. And with that, that's basically the approach that I took. So I'll go fairly quickly showing you each step and the progression that I took. And then I'll show you how to add that last dimension. So what I like to do is go to this button that allows you to just preview the things that you're clicking on. And so you'll see the progression as I move along. We start with this point. This point was then moved a specific length. So this one I had the length as feet. So what I did is 10 times 12. Since this is in inches, um, I had to convert it from feet to inches. Then I created an overall length of a curve that then was subdivided 
using these three points. That length was also extruded up to create the toe kick. And then we create the fragmented surface at the bottom that we then extrude up and subtract from the toe kick. So now we're left over with the overall form that I then extracted, or then I created a countertop using that same surface that is extruded up here, and then we scaled it. And after that, I selected the front surfaces of all of these cabinets by using list item and offset them to the inside by the material depth. And then I extruded it all the way back, but subtracting the material depth in the back. This way, when I subtract it, it doesn't, it still has a back. So when I do that, now I have the leftover cabinets. And then I was able to just use that same one that I used to subtract the material as the one that I offset for the doors. And then those were turned into surfaces and then extruded to create the overall design. Now I'll disable the preview on the doors and bring back the doors like I have them here. And so that is the basics of the approach that I took for this specific design. There are different approaches that we could take depending on the complexity and really the outcome and the use case that you're trying to go for. Um, if you know a specific design, then you can pick the specific dimensions. Um, but if you're just trying to come up with configurations of things that you want to create to manufacture, then um, you should be able to go through those steps and program it using some of the similar steps that I took here. Um, so hopefully that made sense. And now let's get into how to add this last dimension. When I added these dimensions, it was actually fairly simple because that was one of the things that I did at the beginning to create this design is I subdivided it using points. So here at the beginning, I have division one, which is this point, then I have this point, and this point. And since I already have those points, I can create a line segment between them. And I can also plug it into this component, which is the line component, start and end points. It's going to be this start point, this end point. That's also going to be this point A and point B for the dimension. So what I did is once I created this set, then I could just copy it three times. And now I have one, two, three. And all I need to do is add one more. So what I'll do is I'll move this down, bring this up, take this, first I'll ungroup it. So Control Shift G. Now I'll take this and make a copy below. Now I'll take this and this. So these two points, which is this last point and the one that created the overall length, that's going to be endpoint. And this is going to be the start point. So now we have that updating and we can disable the preview on those lines. And also disable the preview on this line so we can see the dimension without anything on top. Now, of course, we have the instruction plane here, but if I change this, I think to Arctic, or let's go here, I think rendered. see that we have the dimensions working and we can even see part of the material and it'll update as we move this. So if we have only 12 on this side, 
and we have 36, 36, and 36. That is kind of symmetrical um, in a way. Now we can also change this last one, or if this is 12, that's 36, 36. Well, we need to change this to 48. And then 48. Now we have 12 at the end. So this is the way that we can kind of make sure that it's symmetrical. Um, The first one will make 24. Now, if you want, um, I yeah, like I said, I will be doing a tutorial for this with all of the steps. Um, and if you have any other questions or um, any other ideas for future videos, make sure to let me know in the comments below. Thank you very much for being here. And I hope to see you next time. If you'd like to support this channel, consider becoming a Script Vault member. This way you can access all of the video scripts that I make for this channel. I can also answer questions and help you if you have any issues. And if you don't know how to use Grasshopper and want to get started, I also have a self-paced workshop that you can get started using Grasshopper. I know Grasshopper is a bit intimidating at first, but once you get used to the mindset of how to use this program, it's actually a very useful program that you can use on many different applications. So thank you very much for being here, and I hope to see you next time.